Hello, today we're doing our second day of probability. We're going to review what we learned from the previous day and then add on to it a little bit. So in this blue box that I have right here, we have our different kinds of probability. Generally, when we talk about probability, it's theoretical, what should happen, what we want to happen. These are almost identical. And then experimental probability is based on an experiment, what actually happens if you're going to flip a coin or roll a dice or whatever. Okay, so it says what is the probability of drawing a 4 from a deck of cards, right? It's a fraction, decimal, and a percent. So all the possibilities, there are a total of 52 cards in a deck. We have ace, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, queen, king. That's 13 cards, and there are 4 suits. Eight, um, diamonds, hearts, spades, and clubs. So the probability of drawing a 4... Well, there's a four of hearts, there's a four of clubs, uh, it looks like a little tree or a golden whatever, what's it, um, you know what I'm trying to say, a little clover, a four of diamonds, and a four of spades, something like that. So, there are four different possibilities out of a total of 52. It doesn't matter what card I would have said. If you draw five, there's still four choices for drawing a five, okay? However, we can simplify this probability. We can divide by four. The probability of drawing that card is one out of 13. If we 52 divided by four, it's going to give us 13. Next, it says, what are the odds against drawing a four? So this one up here was talking about probability, so we did have a total. This one is talking about odds. So odds, we're looking for odds, if it doesn't say, it's odds for drawing a four. So how many favorable choices are there? Well, how many fours are there? There's four fours. How many cards are not a four? Well, if there are 52 cards and we take out four choices, that leaves us with 48. So there are 48 cards that are unfavorable, that are not a 4. So we can simplify this as well. I'm going to divide by 4, and we get 1 divided by 40 divided by 4 is 10, 8 divided by 4 is 2. So 1 out of 12. The odds against drawing a 4, oops, I made a mistake. I did the odds for drawing a 4. I didn't see this word against. So this is what we're really looking for. Instead of favorable and unfavorable, we need to flip it the other direction. So this would really be 48 to 4, which is 12 to 1. So the odds of drawing something other than a 4 are pretty good. 12 cards are something other than a 4 out of 1 that would be a 4. All right, here's another example. It says, in your closet, there are five blue shirts, ten yellow shirts, three green shirts, and two black shirts. Find the probability of grabbing a blue shirt. Probability is always the part you're looking for, remember, out of the total. As we have right here, what you want out of all the possibilities. So we're looking for grabbing a blue shirt. Well, there were five blue shirts out of a total of... Well, 5 plus 10 is 15, 15 plus 3 is 18, and 2 more, 18 plus 2 is 20. So the probability of grabbing a blue shirt is 5 out of 20. If I divide by 5 to simplify, that will give us 1 to 4. Probability of grabbing a blue shirt is 1 out of 4. Next, what's the probability of not grabbing a yellow shirt? So we're looking at probability, not odds, so it's still out of a total of 20. Each of these, since it says probability, your total is going to be 20 on the bottom. So not grabbing a yellow shirt. Well, if there are 10 yellow shirts, that means there are also 10 other shirts that are not yellow. 5 plus 2 plus 3. So that gives us 10 out of 20. If we simplify and divide by 10, that gives us 1 half, or 1 out of 2. Next, what's the probability of grabbing a green or a blue shirt? Well, there are three green shirts, and right here, three green, 
and blue there are five. So probability of this or this, we're adding those two numbers together. Three plus five is eight. So the probability is eight out of 20, which we can simplify. I'm gonna divide by four. You could divide by two and then by two again. And that gives, you, gives us two out of five. We're simplifying our probabilities. And our last one, the probability of grabbing a pink shirt. You guys, there are no pink shirts in our closet. So the probability is zero out of 20 or zero. It's impossible. Probability of zero means it's never gonna happen because we don't even own a pink shirt. <clears throat> Let's flip to the back side. We're gonna look at some probabilities and then we're gonna try and figure out, well, if that probability continues, what is going to happen Look, based on an experiment? So first it says find the probability. Find the probability of spinning a prime number. Remember, a prime number is not divisible by anything other than 1. So 2 is a prime number because we can only divide 2 by 1. Um, 7 is a prime number. We can only divide 7 by 1. 10 is not prime because we can divide by 2 or by 5. 12 is not prime. 8 is not prime. 4 is not prime. 6 is not prime. 5 is prime because we can only divide by 1. And I know some of you might be thinking, 2 you can divide by 2. Well, other than that number in itself, we can divide 7 by 7. So that's not what I'm saying. Other than the number in itself. So the probability of spinning a prime number is 3 out of our total number of possibilities, which are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible outcomes. Probability is three out of eight of spinning a prime number. So how many times would you expect to land on a prime number if we spun the spinner 90 times? So I'm actually gonna set up right here, like it says, a proportion. Well, we should spin and get a prime number three out of eight times. Remember, our total was on the bottom. So if we spin it a total of 90 times, well, how many times should it land on a prime number? We're just going to cross multiply. 8 times x is 8x. 3 times 90, well, 9 times 3 is 27 with a 0 on it. And then to get x by itself, the opposite of multiply is divide. So 270 divided by 8 is 33.75. Now, we can't spin 0.75 times, so we would round this to the nearest whole number, so it would be 34. We would expect to land on a prime number 34 times out of 90. Next, it says, how many times would you expect to land on a prime number if you spun the spinner 350 times? So the probability is still 3 out of 8, but now we're spinning in the spinner a total of 350. We would cross multiply again. 3 times 350. 350 times 3 in my calculator is 1050. And 8 times x is 8x. So if I divide by 8, 1050 divided by 8 is 131.25. Again, we can't have a partial spin, and this number is less than 5, so we would have an answer of 131 times. That's how many times we would land on a prime number. Oops, for some reason, this spinner... Oh, it wasn't a spinner. It was a dice. This was just a picture of a dice here. Let's pretend it landed on a three. Okay. Here's a dice. Find the probability. Find the probability of rolling a number greater than th three. So if you think about a dice, there are six options. Oops, one, two, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the probability of number rolling a number greater than three. Well, three is not greater than three. There are three choices greater than three out of a total of six choices. If we simplify that, we'd get one half. So half of the numbers on a dice are greater than three. So how many times would you expect to roll a number greater than three 
if you rolled the dice 50 times? Well, you could set up a proportion, 1 out of 2, and then a total of 50 times, and cross multiply. Some of you maybe already know that half of 50 is 25. So you should, if this wasn't a perfect world, land on a number greater than 3 25 times. If you cross multiply, 2 times x is 2x, 1 times 50 is 50, and divide by 2. And the last one, how many times would you expect to roll a number greater than 3 if you rolled the die 195 times? So still the same probability, 1 out of 2, and we have a total of 195. So again, 2 times x is 2x. If we divide by 2, though, it's not going to be a nice number because it's odd. So 195 divided by 2 gives us 97.5. Because this is technically 5 or higher, we would round that up to 90, uh, oop, 98 times. We would expect to roll a number greater than 3. So your homework is very similar to this. It does say 13.1, but this is our second. Oops, this is the wrong one. It should be uh, today. My mistake. Today your homework is worksheet 7.8, which you should have on paper or on your iPad. Yesterday's was 13.1.